Hi friends, welcome to worship today. I'm Pastor Katie Bishop and on behalf of this Congregation of Faith, we welcome you today to worship. Today we continue in our sermon series called Created Anew and are reminded that we are created, that we are given freedom for a purpose and that purpose is to glorify God. But before we begin worship, would you join with me in a word of prayer? Awesome God, you knew us before we were born. You love us into life. Open our hearts and our spirits today to hear your word for us. And upon hearing the word, may we be convicted of our call and ministry and mission throughout the church. Bless us with your presence and your powerful love. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. You say, food for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who, who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh, but whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. So I'm going to ask you all some questions. On behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say I do. I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to all people, of all ages, all nations, and all races? If so, say I do. I do. And now I'm going to ask you all, family and friends, godparents, Will you do everything in your power to share God's love and grace with Annabelle? Will you help her to know that she is a beloved child of God? And at some point, by her your teaching and example, help her to know and accept God's grace for herself as she professes her faith openly, that in a way that leads to Christian life. If so, say, I will. I will. And now I'm going to ask you, the Big God family gathered here, will you do everything in your power to surround this family in love and grace? to share and to witness God's love and grace to Annabelle and to help her know always that she is chosen and claimed by God. If so, say we will. We will. We will. The Spirit of the Lord is with us. He is 
So, come, Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Almighty God, the life and birth in us by baptism into Jesus Christ will never die. Your justice never fails. Your mercy is everlasting. Your healing river flows. Your spirit blows where you will. We cannot stop you, God. But sometimes we try. We try to walk the flow. We redirect the winds of the spirit. Or we walk so far away from the life giving spirit that we cannot hear its sound and we forget its power. We harsh ourselves. We are dry and thirsty, O oh God. Come, come, refresh us. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Almighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit on this gift of water and she who receives it. May it wash away her sins and clothe her in righteousness throughout all the days of her life, that in dying and being raised with Christ she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is with you and the Holy Spirit and lives and reigns forever. Amen. So I'm going to take this water and just dip some on your head as I baptize you, okay? I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is oil. We do not have a lot of oil. It's part of what seals us in the child of God. That's what it seals. It's what your heart is going to be. And I anoint you with oil as a beloved daughter of the King, forever loved. Can we pray for Anna? Thank you, God, for the gift of this precious child, for the love and joy she shares, for the truth that she is yours, Lord. May she only know love and favor and blessing all the days of her life. Will you surround her with grace and mercy and hold her close to you? That way, no matter where she walks or wanders, your spirit is with her. All this we pray in the precious and mighty name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Miss Pam is going to sing you a special song.
today for children's time, I want to share with you a picture that was given to me by my grandmother. Now this lived in her house for as long as I can remember. And when she moved out of her house into the nursing home, she was giving away all of her things. And because I'm a pastor who uses a picture for baptism and for communion and for all different kinds of things, my grandmother thought that I would want it. And it's special to me, right? It's special because she made it. It's special because she chose me to have it. It's special because it makes me think of her, which is why on the very bottom of the picture, can you see? I put my initials, KB. I don't care if other people use it or if it goes other places, but eventually I want it to come back to me because it's special to me and important to me. I thought about that as we think about our scripture today. You know, God has given us freedom to do a lot of things, to share love and kindness, to live our lives and follow. But ultimately, God wants us to choose to come back to God, that the way we share kindness shares God's love and grace, that the way we live our lives shares God's kindness and mercy, that the way that we help other people brings people back to God. You might not have a name initial on the bottom of your foot or on the bottom of your hand that says God's, but you are. And God has made you for a purpose. Can we pray together? Gracious and loving God, thank you for this reminder today that we are called to follow after you. That while you have given us lots of freedom, ultimately we belong to you. Help us this week in all that we do and say in the ways that we live to come back to you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me? Beloved God, you know us inside and out, and you still call us to serve you. Lord, honestly, we are often hesitant, afraid, and wish to remain hidden. Empower us to listen for and to hear your call. Empower us to answer your call with, here I am, Lord. Empower us to follow you when you call us to follow you. Lord of mercy and justice, so, mon so many have gone before us working to bring justice and peace to our country and world. Their footsteps seem too big to step into, to continue the work you have called us to. So we hesitantly step one step at a time, bringing your seeds of hope, justice, and peace in a world that is crying out for help. Lord of hope, we pray for our country our leaders, and especially out our new president as he is inaugurated into leading our country in tumultuous times. We pray for healing of our country, reconciliation, forgiveness, and peace. We pray to you, the Lord of our peace, we pray for your compassion and healing for those individuals in our congregation who need it. We pray for your comfort and presence for those who are grieving, lonely, and oppressed. We pray for warmth, shelter, clothing, and food for those who are without. Lord, we say to you this day, here we are your servants, willing to preach your word, offer care where care is needed, presence where presence is needed, your love where your love is needed the most. Lord, strengthen us for our ministry today and every day. In the name of the Son, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the, the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. morning as we gather around God's holy word together we continue in our created a new sermon series today talking about the paradox that is Christian freedom and being reminded that we are created for a purpose but before we begin let's spend a moment in prayer together mighty and merciful God we give thanks for this day you have made and the chance to gather around your word for the reminder Lord that you call us to share hope and healing and promise and ask, Lord, that you would hide me behind the cross so that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts might be acceptable in your sight. Our rock, our redeemer. Amen. Amen. 
I remember several years ago when I had a toddler standing in my kitchen having a serious debate. I had asked her very clearly to do something, but all toddlers have their own mind and intention. I remember that she looked up at me and she said, you're not the boss of me. And that was the first time I had had my child repeat the words that I had said how many times to my own parents, right? This is something we all like to say. And as I stood there debating with a toddler, I realized that there was indeed a boss in the room, but it was not me. I think we as Christians have a hard time understanding what Christian freedom really is and what it looks like. We cling to our own self-determination and authority. We like to say very clearly to God and anyone who gets in our way, you are not the boss of me, which is why today's scripture is so hard for us, so important for us to wrestle with and think about how we as God's people are created for a purpose. This particular text, which comes from Paul's letter to the church at Corinth, is probably a response to questions that have been asked specifically. Paul had been asked probably specifically about a few ways that the community of believers was interacting with each other. Christian theologians like to believe that perhaps this section that talks about how everything is permissible, which is the better translation, is probably a phrase, a thought, a call that people had said together. Well, everything is permissible for me. Nothing is held back for me. I can do anything I want. I have freedom in Jesus. And Paul kind of nuances that a little bit. He wrestles with that a little bit. He calls us to realize that while we might be free in Jesus Christ, there is a way for us to live in our Christian freedom, a way to live in our own authority, a way to remember that we are called and created for a purpose. Christian theologian, Dr. Arlen Hultgren writes this. He says, we are free in Christ, Paul insists, carrying on our lives apart from any restraints like laws or customs or mores, we are free to deny systems of behavior or belief others wish to prescribe for us. But there is something greater here. We are created for a purpose. We as God's people have a hard time understanding that while everything might be permissible, everything is not good for us. Healthy and Holy boundaries are an important way for us as a Christian community of faith to live out our purpose, to live out God's call. And while we might be free to do anything we want, we must be careful that our freedom doesn't cause bondage or oppression or harm or sin for someone else. How we live our Christian freedom matters. Perhaps it's easiest for us to think about this in a particular way. Instead of being freed to do whatever we want, we are freed for a purpose. In the constant barrage of news the last few weeks, the brokenness and struggle we face in community and in our country, violence has threatened to spill over and weighed heavy on us all. I was particularly inspired this past week about an article about the new chaplain who serves the House of Representatives. She's a Presbyterian minister and the first female to serve in this post. Rear Admiral Margaret Kibben recounted her experiences of what happened on January 6th for the Religion News Service. I'm going to put a link to the article. The whole thing was very powerful. She writes about how this was just her third day on the job. And in the midst of the panic and fear by insurrectionists breaking through the Capitol, she shared that in those moments, as they were not sure what was going to happen next, a house clerk leaned over to her and asked if she could offer a prayer. And she did. She remembers the sound of the woman transcribing the words of her prayer as she called on God to provide a hedge of protection and comfort around them. And she says this, and that in the chaos, the spirit would descend in the room and offer us all peace and order that we would be able to care for each other, even under the stress. What a powerful word of prayer. The whole article is quite powerful about her experience as serving God's servant in such a difficult and hard place in the midst of the terror and the violence that happened last week. And she writes very clearly about the moments that she felt the spirit settle upon them and connect them. And in the end, she says this, faith matters. It mattered on Wednesday. It matters today. It will matter tomorrow. Friends, our faith matters. 
The way we live our lives matter. The way we love one another and serve one another and build up the kingdom of God and tear down the walls of white supremacy and of hatred and of violence matters. The ways that we stand up and speak out against racism, the way that we work as a community of faith to proclaim hope and healing, the way that we pray, the way that we live, the way that we love, it matters as we seek to live freed for a purpose. Our faith matters. And yes, there is freedom in Jesus Christ that makes a way for us to live our lives so we're not bound by mores and sin and brokenness or the expectations of others. We, though, are not free to do whatever we want. We are freed for a purpose. Our Bible tells us that that is to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with God. We are freed for a purpose, to love the Lord our God with all our heart and our soul and our mind and our strength, to love our neighbor as ourselves. We are freed for a purpose. This week, as you are created anew, may you claim the truth that God has set you free for a purpose. Would you pray with me? God of grace and God of glory, Today especially, we pray for our country, for the brokenness and heartache and sin that has torn people apart. We ask, Lord, that you would help us as a people of faith remember that we are freed for a purpose and that we would speak your love and your justice and your hope and your mercy, that we would be people who proclaim that indeed faith matters. Lord, help us to be your hands and your feet this week. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 5 and 13 through 18. Lord, you have examined me. You know me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up. Even from far away, you comprehend my plans. You study my traveling and resting. You are thoroughly familiar with all my ways. There isn't a word on my tongue, Lord, that you don't already know completely. You surround me, front and back. You put your hand on me. You are the one who created my innermost parts. You knit me together while I was still in my mother's womb. I give thanks to you that I was marvelously set apart. Your works are wonderful. I know that very well. My bones weren't hidden from you when I was being put together in a secret place, when I was being woven together in the deep parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my embryo, and on your scroll every day was written that was being formed for me before any one of them had yet happened. God, your plans are incomprehensible to me. Their total number is countless. If I tried to count them, they outnumber the grains of sand. If I came to the very end, I would still be with you. If I rise on the wings of the dawn
Well, friends, it is our hope and our prayer this week that you have felt the power of God working through our worship service, that you claim the truth that you are created for a purpose. Tomorrow, we will have on our YouTube channel a special Martin Luther King Jr. Day worship service led by Church Anew. We hope you will watch it and hear it and be inspired by it. But hear now your benediction. As you go, may you go in peace. May you go with God's peace and wherever you go and as best you can. Go to share and to spread that peace. Amen. Amen.